2013 International Medical Travel and Business Summit. I've been given the dubious distinction of, of kicking this thing off. I think people are probably still getting out of their planes right now, but welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, what we're going to talk about is what we do and what is inbound in internet marketing. Inbound marketing is the new sort of buzzword that uh, uh, really encompasses what goes on in, as far as successful internet marketing is concerned. Um, the most important thing that I wish for you to take from this presentation uh, are questions about your site. If you're serious about your website, uh, the questions that I'm going to be asking today and hopefully answering or helping you answer are things you should be taking away and asking for yourself. Um, uh, after that, we're going to explore explanation of several short-term and long-term internet strategies. Uh, then I'm going to give you some of our success stories, some of the statistics and things that we've uh, uh, gleaned from some of our own companies and clients and, and uh, uh, experiences. Uh, we're going to go to uh, a, a section I call covering all the bases, giving you a quick rundown of what's going on in the internet, what you have to do to cover all the bases as far as internet marketing is concerned, and then uh, some trends and uh, some, some special offers for people at the summit. All right, who am I and what I do? Part of what I, uh, this is a short list of what it, it entails to do internet marketing. Internet marketing and in, inbound marketing includes market research, devising internet strategies for business. The, the first and foremost and most important aspect of an internet campaign, an internet marketing campaign, is to uh, explore the niche and understand the nature of the business of the client. That's the hard part. You have to get into every single typical business and understand exactly what their market is, exactly who their client might be, uh, who their comp competition might be, et cetera. Additionally, as a part of inbound marketing, content creation is very important. Syndication and distribution, one of the most important things uh, uh, in internet marketing is getting your content noticed and distributed across the internet so that people can see it, see the quality of your content, and hopefully return back to your website. Uh, we also provide social media monitoring services and engagement. I'm going to go into a bit more of that a little later. And then uh, no real internet strategy would be complete without uh, some sort of pay-per-click advertising campaign. Uh, all of these are designed for one purpose, to increase your business's internet revenue. Okay? It's, whether we're talking about revenue, for the purpose of this discussion, we're going to discuss revenue. But in reality, not all, all websites are based on just money. Some are based on disseminating information. Some are based on creating a political message, charity. There's a number of things. But for the purposes, when I use revenue, the bottom line, what I'm talking about is trying to drive additional traffic to your website for the purpose of what your purpose is, whether it be making money, whether it be disseminating a message, whatever. What is SEO? OK, in a short version, SEO, search engine optimization, uh, is a combination of tactics and strategies, including, but not limited to, optimization of information architecture, meaning your website's usability and, and, uh, and design, content focus, audience targeting, design, development, keyword research, keyword placement, link building, social media marketing, and any other online or offline uh, branding and marketing elements that support the goal of, bottom line, receiving more traffic from search engines. Now, what is inbound marketing? Uh, I've thrown a little certificate of one of my certifications, Inbound Marketing Certificate of Excellence. And here's what it means. It means showing your expertise with valuable content. In the old days, brick and mortar marketing firms would hold content expertise in-house. You know, it was not something they would give away. But now, setting yourself apart really requires you to offer something of value and quality to the client in order to attract their attention. As I said, in old school marketing, valuable information or expertise was a closely guarded secret. Now it's the only way to really get noticed on the internet. Uh, offering high quality content or useful advice or expertise is a means of proving your worth to an internet audience that has a really short attention span. Uh, SEO is hard work. Uh, you know, the content creation is something else, but think of it like, uh, you know, your television station. Old brick and mortar marketing used to use television as, as its primary medium. And uh, basically think of all the channels you'd have and you're trying to get attention on every single one of them. Well, that's what SEO, when you can think of the various outlets that we try to place content as channels, for instance, as of a television. And here's a, just a short list of them, not even all of them, but SEO, uh, display advertising, social media, webinars, email, link building, white papers, document presentation, PDFs, there's a lot of it. In other words, it's hard work to get that, that disseminate that information in such a way that it gets people to, to see your content and drive them back to your website. All right, here's a couple of one of the first questions. Um, do you know if your website's working for you? If everybody I'm assuming here has a website, uh, 
what you need to ask yourself is, is your website working for you? Do you know anything about how to track or know what the quest right questions are? Uh, for instance, do you track your visitors' behavior on your website and do you respond to it? Uh, do you know what your total cost of ownership is, for instance? What you've invested in the website? It's really the only way to be able to tell whether your investment is making any sense. If, you're, if you don't know your total cost of ownership, you can't tell if the revenue that you're generating is, uh, is actually worthwhile. Uh, do you know what your internet sales are? Do you have an idea of what sales are taking place through your internet site? And more importantly, do you have an idea of what the value of an internet lead is? You know, over time, these things, we help companies track these things. We help companies determine what a lead is worth. Ultimately, in order to understand and invest properly in an internet marketing strategy, you need to know these numbers. Okay, do you know what your competition is doing on the internet? Very, very important. You know, many people think that it's too late, or my competition's already ahead, or they've already got all the page one, and this, that, and the other thing, and it's, it's just basically not true. And one, one statistic that will help you uh, take heart is that, uh, believe it or not, every single day, 25% of the searches that are done on Google are brand new that have never been searched for before, which is kind of amazing if you think about it. In other words, every single day, all of the searches that take place, billions upon billions, 25% of them have never, ever been entered into a search engine before, ever. So it's a dynamic place, it's always changing. Um, another question, are you receiving regular reports on your website's performance? Very important. Uh, On-page optimization, now this is sort of the first step in what needs to take place to understand whether your site is working for you. Basically judging your website's usability. Uh, here's an example of one of our sites. Is your website inviting? Well, welcome to our site. Yes, it's inviting, it's, it's warm, it's friendly looking. Uh, that's one thing, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do is show you a couple of examples of what I consider on-page optimization and what's important. But ultimately, this gets backed up with analytics, meaning you, you actually track your visitor behavior, what they're actually doing on your website, to determine whether your site's working for you or not. Is your website clear? Uh, the focus of this website is relocating doctors, nurses, uh, clinics, you name it, to Latin America. Your clinic in Latin America, very clear message. Does your website have clear calls to action? This is a buzzword you will hear a lot. Calls to action are something that's very important. You need to lead your internet client into what you want them to do next on your website. You have to basically tell them where you want them to go and what you want them to do. In this case, and I can't really point to it, but you'll see that next to the first picture, you'll say read more. That's a call to action. That invites the, 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 the user further into the site. You'll see below on the bottom a free ebook, something of content, something of value that you can give away to your client that shows that you're an expert in your field. That's a second call to action. Uh, the third call to action is a chat box on the bottom right. There are three calls to action on this. There's three possible options for your client to actually go further into your website and ultimately and hopefully become a lead. Does your website identify with your clients? Tell your clients who they are. Tell them, you know, you, we, you're our clients. In this case, doctors, nurses, hospitals, they're the clients for this website. We made it very clear in an attempt, obviously, to be clear. Does your website identify with your clients? Know who your clients are. In this case, this page, this website gets 23,000 page views a month. Pretty healthy. But more importantly, these people that are coming to this site are viewing five pages each time they come to the website. Not only that, but they're spending almost five minutes on the website. The average is like 30 seconds or less, okay, normally. So, uh, and <clears throat> what you're seeing here as well is at least, uh, well, the bounce rate. Another very important thing that everybody should know is what happens when the people come to your landing page. Your very first home page is called your landing page. The bounce rate is how many people come to that page and leave before they ever go further into the site. 46% is a very good bounce rate. 80%, if everybody leaves the site, Without going further, you've really sort of lost them, all right? Uh, one of our success stories, I had the privilege of being uh, part of a group that uh, was a great learning experience for me. The, uh, we spent about $50,000 on SEO in eight months. What happened is it gave me the, the opportunity to go carte blanche. And what I'm showing you here, and I got to tell you that uh, Costa Rica real estate is one of the most competitive terms in Costa Rica. We, in it, we managed to get this up to number one for every single one of those terms you're seeing right there on Google. All right, that 50,000 has already turned into a $200,000 return. Okay, there's 50 leads a day coming into that website, which is pretty amazing. 
Uh, convergent success story, and I will say these numbers are quite high because what we did with this particular case is we did one of those, uh, those Groupon uh, promotions. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but what we did is we did a super slash discounted price that got onto their website and gave us probably 14,000 hits in a day. Okay, The conversion rate here, how we measure conversion is if someone comes to your contact form, fills it out, and in this case we'd work closely to figure out what the conversion math was, meaning how many clients, what percentage of clients actually turned into a booking in this case. In this case, it was 30%. Okay, so the conversion math turned out to be for 891 visits to the contact form, every third person became a booking. We had calculated that each booking was worth $242. Uh, they made $72,000 in that month, and a year before that, they had no internet sales whatsoever. They did very well. <clears throat> All right, covering all the bases, uh, you know, SEO is just one part of internet marketing. You know, the internet is just one aspect. You've got to really cover all the bases. Uh, social media is a must address these days. We have some fantastic programs nowadays that are, are part of some of our packages that allow us to take, for instance, your keyword, whatever your niche is, whether it be, uh, uh, whether it be uh, you know, facilitating, uh, medical tourism facilitator, for instance. We can monitor every single mention of that term, medical tourism facilitator, with the, the, the software that we have. And it allows us to engage the customer right immediately once those things are identified. So cross social media, we place in a buzzword or all the keyword phrases that we're after for your company. And as soon as we see it, we can automatically engage that client immediately. It's quite amazing and it produces great results. Uh, Pay-per-click, not just Google, but uh, Pay-per-click usually is, you know, ultimately what you're after are organic search results, those results in Google that, uh, uh, you know, show up on the first pages because people are more likely to click those uh, because they don't trust as much the paid advertising. But as far as a short-term strategy is concerned, pay-per-click is excellent. I mean, the bottom line is, you know, I've had campaigns with pay-per-click that for every dollar returned $1.50. You know, that's a 50% return on investment. That's not bad. I mean, that's not every, t every day or every time. But over time, as you invest in this, you can calculate what your return on investment is very directly. And it's a great place to actually uh, test new keywords, to find out which one of those words, which of those phrases people are searching for, actually turn into customers. You know, some phrases are actually more likely to turn into a paying client than others. And that's the experimentation we do over time to figure out which ones work. Obviously, you know, this is an obvious one. If you're doing print media, if you're doing TV, you're doing various other uh, conventional medias, you need to integrate your website, your website address, things like that. It's almost an obvious one. Uh, quality content creation, okay? Um, quality rises to the top. Cream rises to the top in the internet as well. And, and basically, the way to set yourself apart on the internet is to create and syndicate and distribute quality content. It returns back tenfold. Quality content, for instance, I recently did a press release for this summit, as a matter of fact, that got picked up by CBS News. And when I tell you that it generated a thousand hits for our website with just one release, just because it was well written, it had been done correctly, and uh, they picked it up, and it made a huge difference. It, it doesn't get picked up by CBS every day, I'll let you know, but uh, it was quite a good thing. On page optimization, basically the usability stuff that I was talking about earlier, uh, clear cut design, clear presentation of product or service. Uh, analytics and testing, extremely important. It's the basis of my business. It's the basis of our success. We try new things. If they work, we continue with them. If they don't work, we try different things until we have something that works. Uh, constant testing is probably the bulk of the time spent, including content creation, on making a, a website successful. Okay? Uh, spying on the competition. Uh, in order to enter the game, you know, if the competition is too fierce, then you're going to look for some other, other avenue of getting your clients, you know? If it's not, by examining the competition, you find out all of a sudden there's an opportunity that maybe your competition hasn't seen or they may be not even in the game yet. But looking at your competition is a very important aspect of determining your tactics and strategy as far as internet marketing is concerned. Social media engagement. This is actually an example of one of those programs that I, that I mentioned that we use. It's quite expensive, but it enables us to monitor any keyword, any website, you name it, we can set it up so that we can actually get instant recognition of a mention of this keyword. And if that keyword is associated with your niche, we can automatically engage the client. Very powerful. Multimedia video sites are huge, okay? YouTube is now the second biggest search engine after Google. 
I mean, Google now owns them, of course, but the rules are slightly different. Our company is, is really adept at getting video, videos ranked high on, on YouTube. Uh, YouTube's only one of many video sites, but you know, all the other video sites combined do not measure up to the hits and, and views that YouTube does, all put together. Understand that if you're making YouTube videos, even the, uh, the spoken content is transcribed, and that's actually important to make sure that your keyword phrases are in the spoken content. Uh, because that's how Google identifies where to rank these things. Pay-per-click done right. Like I said, having a pay-per-click campaign is important. It increases brand visibility. It's an excellent testing ground for conversion keywords, meaning I can put 20 keywords down that all seem like they're related to your, your, your niche, and then all of a sudden one will, will start to, to separate itself because we can track from the moment the person clicks on that ad all the way to the point where they've actually filled out your contact form. And then these certain terms all of a sudden become more prevalent, more evidently more strong, stronger, excuse me. Uh, and then, you know, once we've determined and actually tested these things, we'd find out which keywords actually turn into paying clients. Some will surprise you, some won't. But uh, this testing is very important. It's, you know, one of the hardest things is getting the clients to track things on the far end, okay? Getting them to say, okay, ask you where your person's come from, determining what a lead value is, what an internet contact is worth to you, what percentage of them turn into paying clients. This is probably one of the hardest and most important things to do, getting businesses to apply old world business practices to their internet clients. Okay, it's very obvious. How many clients are coming on the internet? How many turn into clients? What's the average worth of it? That's how you measure whether your internet marketing is a success or not. Uh, pay-per-click is not just Google anymore. There's a lot of pay-per-clicks out there. Facebook is another good, uh, ROI. All right, a few things to remember about any internet marketing campaign, just a few tidbits. Product or service. Great search marketing will not hide a subpar product or service. It just doesn't happen. Patience. Search engine marketing is a long-term process. As I mentioned, we use, usually at the beginning of a, a client relationship, we use a long-term and a short-term strategy. Short-term is usually including the pay-per-click, but the long-term is always after the organic Google searches. Google's got 90-something percent of the market in the United States, for instance. You have to approach them, you have to, uh, you know, the reality is that people trust the organic search results in a much greater way than they do the paid search results that are down on the right side, et cetera. So the goal, and not, the, not an easy one, is to get those organic rankings. Uh, design and usability, another kind of a repeat of what I mentioned earlier as far as usability is concerned, but providing a great user experience should be really the principal thing you're trying to do. I mean, that's what we attempt to do. Instead of trying to game Google, instead of trying to fool them, or instead of trying to throw links all over the place, really creating a good quality website and then keep marketing the website with good quality content really should be the focus. That's what they want and that's what works. Analytics are so important because if you don't analyze the site, you don't see what user behavior is, you're not going to know what's working or not. Um, content, as I said, good quality content. The users want it. Search engines need it. Search marketing success demands it, period. Links, briefly about links. Links are essentially a vote for your website, and that's a big part of what we do for clients is putting links onto high authority sites that are relevant to your, your particular niche and getting them onto these, these high authority sites, because it's not an equal vote. In other words, a link from the New York Times in a story about medical tourism has a huge amount of authority as opposed to, a, it's, it's, it has more weight than a thousand links from a thousand medical tourism sites. Let's put it that way, it's not an equal vote. Getting good links on good authority sites that have relevant content to what you're selling is very important. Um, obviously, social, local findability, that's more brick and mortar uh, marketing technique. You obviously, engage with your customers on local and social sites, local sites being, you know, local forums, whatever your niche might be, whether you're in the United States, California, a California forum, a Costa Rica forum. Find out where your users are hanging out or create that environment for them and create that social hangout for them. Now, the importance of YouTube, once again, can't be underestimated. It's huge. Uh, I, think one of the, I think it was Reuters that said that uh, videos will outplace organic rankings as far as how people get back in traffic to websites within the next five years. Hugely important. Importance of Google. Uh, I'll just reiterate. The right search engine marketing strategy, getting found on Google's organic search can be a very attainable goal. It all takes research and finding out what your comp competition is doing. 
In the offline world, it's about location. In the online world, it's about traffic. Traffic increases revenue. Increasing traffic increases revenue every single time if your site is built properly and you're in business on the internet. Increasing the traffic of, of like-minded people that need to find your site is going to increase your revenue. It's a given. Um, you know, Google and other search engines can make or break a business online. That's why it's very important to understand or hire a company to understand how to harness the effectiveness, effectiveness of the search engine. That's a Google market share. That's global. As I said, it's well over 90% in the United States, which affects most of us here. Here's something that's really getting ready to take off. Uh, Spanish SEO, for instance. Spanish is the second most spoken language in the world, okay? Right now, six million people a month search for medico in the United States as opposed to doctor. And nobody is competing for these Spanish terms. In other words, let me tell you something. These translators, these buttons that you have on your website, they actually do nothing to attract Spanish-speaking people searching on Google whatsoever. If there's even a hint that there's a Spanish market in your area, you need to have a Spanish website and you need to do Spanish SEO. They're three to five years behind us. There's enormous opportunity. There's as many searches in Spanish for most things as there are in English, if not more. For instance, in Costa Rica, we're getting ready, we're developing the Spanish site for Costa Rica real estate. Costa Rica Casas has 20,000 more searches a month than Costa Rica real estate, for instance. You know, pretty amazing. A lot of opportunity there. <clears throat> Mobile browsing trends. Uh, this is another snapshot from that, uh, from that group on, in that one month, 3,765 people came to the site on a mobile device. Now, a troubling statistic is only 1% of companies have a mobile-ready website, meaning they rely on their big website to scrunch down and be usable on a mobile device. It just it doesn't happen. Um, you know, 1% of companies are ready with mobile sites, and in a survey, 72% of people expect it. There's a wide gap. Are you mobile ready? Just, are you mobile ready? As I said, 72% of people expect it, 1% of people are there. Bottom line, last question that you should ask for yourselves is, are you doing the right thing when it comes to your website? And some of those questions that I mentioned earlier are very important to you. Um, anybody that's interested in receiving a copy of this, uh, you know, this thing, just sit, this uh, presentation, please let me know. I'm more than happy to send it to you. Okay, just give me your business card. Be a pleasure. Thank you very much.